Welcome to my channel, where today we'll be counting down the top 10 anime where the main character gets betrayed but returns overpowered. So if this is a topic that interests you, stick around, as there might just be some anime on this list that'll surprise you. But with that being said, let's jump right into the video, starting off with number 10, Juran, the Princess of Snow and Blood. In 1931, the Tokugawa Shogunate remains in power, marking the 64th year of the Meiji era. Holding a monopoly on the newly discovered Dragon Bane, the government is leading Japan towards an advanced Edo period. During this time, an elite force of executioners called the Nue is tasked with defending the shogunate from rebel institutions known as the Kuchigawa. And soon we are introduced to the owner of the Suyukasa bookshop, Sawana Yukimura, who runs the store's day-to-day -day business inconspicuously. But behind the scenes, she seeks vengeance against a man who slaughtered her entire tribe and family. With the special ability to transform granted by her blue blood, Sawana joins the Nue after being promised information regarding the target of her revenge, who just so happens to be the leader of the Kuchigawa. Thus marks the start of Sawana's adventure and bloodstained path to vengeance, along the way revealing that she is not the fragile girl she appears to be on the surface, but is instead a skilled warrior who is willing to cut down any foe that stands in the way of her goal. Number 9, Kabunari of the Iron Fortress the world is in the midst of an industrial revolution when horrific creatures emerge from a mysterious virus ripping through the flesh of humans to satiate their never-ending appetite. The only way to kill these monsters, known as Kabane, is by destroying their steel-coated hearts. However, if bitten by one of these creatures, the victim is doomed to a fate worse than death, as the fallen rise once more to join the ranks of their fellow undead. Only the most fortified of civilizations have been able to survive this turmoil, as is the case with the island of Hinamoto, where mankind has created massive walls to protect themselves from the endless horror of Kabane. The only way into these giant fortresses is via heavily armored trains, which are serviced and built by young men such as Ikuma, who has created a deadly weapon that he believes will easily pierce through the hearts of Kabane. Ikuma now eagerly awaits the day when he will be able to fight using his new invention. However, little does he know that this chance will come much sooner than he ever could have expected. Number 8, Garo the Animation. In the name of the king, the Valiente Kingdom launched hunts to exterminate users of witchcraft. 17 years later, and the pursuits are still growing in both size and brutality. Unknown to the citizens, however, the targets of these witch hunts are secret protectors of humanity. Known as the Maikai Knights and Alchemists, they have a strong will to protect people from horrors or demons who have possessed the souls plagued by sadness and pain. One such Maikai Knight is a 17 year old Leon Lewis, who inherits the legendary armor of the Golden Knight Garo from his mother. Though he possesses great power, he struggles to overcome the hatred he bears from his mother's death at the hands of the kingdom. His father German, known as Zoro the Shadow Cutting Knight, is still training Leon when he is called to investigate the upsurge of horrors in the kingdom's capital. And although German knows that Leon's will is wavering, he decides to bring Leon along with him to continue his training. Meanwhile, as German and Leon head to the capital, the king's son Alfonso Valiente struggles to find a solution to the growing horror threat. But before he can do so, he is double-crossed and banished from his own kingdom. To return home one day, Alfonso sets out to find the help and strength he needs to reclaim the throne. During his search, he comes across Leon, whose interaction with the prince will forever change the fate of these two young men, and perhaps even the fate of the entire kingdom. Number 7, Batum. Ryuta Sakamoto is unemployed and lives with his mother, his only real achievement being that he is Japan's top player in the popular online video game Batum. However, his peaceful life is about to change when he finds himself stranded on an island in the middle of nowhere, with a small green crystal embedded in his left hand and no memory of how he got there. To his shock, someone has decided to recreate the game he is so fond of in real life. However, in this version, there will be no respawning after you die. Armed with a bag full of unique bombs known as BIM, the players are tasked with killing their fellow participants and taking their green crystals in order to return home. Intentionally condemning any form of violence, Ryuta is forced to fight when he realizes that many of the other players are not as welcoming as they may seem, teaming up with Himiko, a fellow Batum player, as they attempt to get off the island together, and along the way slowly revealing the truth behind this contest of death. Number 6, Tower of God. There is a tower that summons chosen people called regulars, with the promise of granting their deepest desires. Whether it be wealth, fame, authority, or something that surpasses all of them, everything awaits those who reach the top. We are soon introduced to Bomb, who is a boy that has only known a dark cave, dirty clothes, and an unreachable light his entire life. So when a girl named Rachel came to him through the light, his entire world changed. Becoming close friends with Rachel, he learns various things about the outside world from her. But when Rachel says that she must leave him in order to climb the tower, his whole world shatters right before his eyes. Vowing to follow after her no matter what it takes, he sets his sight on ascending to the top of the tower. And thus begins the journey of Bomb, a young boy who was not chosen by the tower but 
opens the gates by himself. They call his kind of regulars, beings that have shaken the very foundation of the tower every time they step foot inside of it. However, unbeknownst to him at the time, all that lies ahead of his past is tragedy and betrayal on his way to the top. Number 5. Yona of the Dawn The kingdom of Kokowa is blessed with a beautiful princess whose childlike innocence charms all who she comes across. Named Yona, she has grown up sheltered in the royal palace, shielded from any forms of danger that may befall her. However, eventually all good things must one day come to an end. Yona's perfect world comes crashing down when the heinous act of treason threatens to erase all that she holds dear, including her birthright as the princess of Kokowa. Left with no one to trust aside from her childhood friend and loyal bodyguard Sun Hawk, she is forced to flee the palace. Faced with the perils of surviving in the wild with a target on her back, Yona soon realizes that the kingdom is no longer the safe haven that it once was. Now free from the shackles of naivety, Yona vows to do everything in her power to become strong enough to crush her enemies. With Hawk by her side, she must piece together the remnants of an ancient legend that might just be the key to reclaiming her kingdom from those who conspire to steal it from her. Number 4. Blast of Tempest Yoshino Takigawa is an ordinary teenager who is secretly dating his best friend Mashiro's younger sister, but when his girlfriend Aika mysteriously dies, Mashiro disappears, vowing to find the one responsible and make them pay for murdering his beloved sister. Yoshino continues his life as usual and has not heard from Mashiro in months. That is, until he is confronted by a strange girl who holds him at gunpoint, and his best friend arrives in the nick of time to save him. Yoshiro soon comes to learn that Mashiro has enlisted the help of a witch named Hakuze Kusurabe to find Akai's killer and the existence of an entity known as the Tree of Exorcist, which the witch's brother selfishly desires to make use of his power in spite of the impending peril it'll cause to the world. However, Hakuze is banished to a deserted island and it is now up to Yoshino and Mashiro to help her save the world, while inching ever closer to the truth behind Akai's death. Number 3. Mao Dao Zushi Zhen is a state of immortality that all cultivators strive to achieve. However, there is a dark energy that lies underneath, the forbidden Mao Dao or demonic path. And through an unfortunate series of tragedies, this is the path that the cultivator Wei Wu Zhen has begun to experiment with during his teaching. However, his rise in power is accompanied by chaos and destruction, but it is not long until his reign of terror comes to an abrupt end when the cultivation clans overpower him and he is killed by his closest ally. 13 years later, and Wei Wu Zhen is reincarnated in the body of a lunatic and reunited with Long Wan Ji, a former classmate of his. This marks the beginning of a supernatural mystery that plagues the clans and threatens to disrupt their everyday life. And thus the series follows these two men on their mission to unravel the mystery of the spiritual world. Fighting against demons, ghosts, and even other cultivators, these two end up forming a bond that neither of them could have ever expected. Number 2. Dororo The greedy samurai lord Daigo Kagimetsu's land is dying, and he would do anything for power, even renounce Buddha and make a pact with demons. His prayers are answered by 12 demons who grant him the power he desires by aiding in his prefecture's growth, but it came at a price. When Kagimetsu's first son is born, the boy has no limbs, no nose, no ears, no eyes, nor even skin, yet he still lives. This child is disposed of in a river and forgotten, but as luck would have it, he is saved by a medicine man who provides him with prosthetics and weapons, allowing him to survive and fend for himself. The boy lives and grows, and although he cannot see, hear, or even feel anything, he must defeat the demons that took him as a sacrifice, and with the death of each one, he regains a part of himself that is rightfully his. For many years, he wanders alone until one day an orphan boy named Dororo befriends him. And now, the unlikely pair of castaways must fight for their survival and humanity in an unforgiving demon-infested world. Number 1. Vinland Saga Young Thorfinn grew up listening to the stories of old sailors that have traveled the ocean and reached a place of legend known as Vinland. It is said to be warm and fertile, a place where there would be no need for fighting, not at all like the frozen village in Iceland where he was born, and certainly not like his current life as a mercenary. With war now being his home, he reminisces back to a time when his father once told him, you have no enemies, nobody does, there is nobody who it's okay to hurt. However, as he grew, Thorfinn knew that this was nothing further from the truth. The war between between England and the Danes grow worse with each passing year. Death has now become commonplace and the Viking mercenaries are loving every moment of it, as allying with either side will cause massive swings in the balance of power and the Vikings are happy to make names for themselves and take any spoils they earn along the way. And among the chaos, Thorfinn is slowly honing his skills as a warrior and becoming a formidable fighter, all to gain revenge against Askeladd, the only man who bested his father in combat. And thus marks the start of Thorfinn's journey as he trains to one day become the strongest man that this era of war and destruction hath ever seen.
Well, there you have it. My list of the top 10 anime where the main character gets betrayed but returns overpowered. So if you made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it or found it helpful, hit the like button and consider subscribing to stay up to date with all future anime recommendations. In addition to that, if you have any genre you would like for me to cover in a future video, let me know down in the comment section. But if not, until next time, signing out.